So many people ask me if the title of Dai Sifu is a thing. It's not. Well, that's it for this episode of the Kung Fu Genius. I'll see you guys next time. Dai Sifu is kind of a thing, but not really. All right, let's take a look at it. And every day, I practice martial arts. <laughs>
So they might use it just to justify writing about you at all because here's the news for you guys who teach Chinese Kung Fu. Being a Sifu, at least from a Chinese perspective, is not as big of a deal as you guys like it to be. And maybe that's the reason why you guys like to have this extra title of Dai Sifu, but it's not really a thing. The term is hyperbole, it's amplification, but most importantly, it comes from an outside source. I was even called Dai Si, which is a variation on Dai Sifu by the gossip rag Apple Daily in Hong Kong many years ago. When my wife, who is Chinese, saw it, she laughed and thought, do the readers of Apple Daily know that the Dai Si falls asleep on the couch? Now the term has two potential meanings in Chinese. The first one is the one that I just explained. It's an amplification used by the media or used by a friend or used by your own personal hype man. In that situation, it would be in really poor taste to decide that you are now gonna call yourself Dai Sifu or insist that other people call you Dai Sifu just because the magazine did it or your hype man did it. The second potential use of the term Dai Sifu is quite different, but it's a bit rare these days. The term can refer to someone who is your first Sifu if you had multiple Sifus. Now, before anyone screams at me and says, but you can only have one Sifu in Chinese martial arts, well, yes and no. This one Sifu only rule has been very flexibly applied over the years, and it also depends on one Sifu in what. So if you, for whatever reason, have had multiple Sifus, perhaps in different martial arts, your very first Sifu could be referred to as your Dai Sifu. And this is very similar to someone being your Dai Sihing or eldest senior brother. But that's the thing, if someone is your Dai Sifu because you have multiple Sifus and they're your first Sifu in anything, that would mean that is your relationship with them. That is something you call them. But that person, just because they're your Dai Sifu, isn't now called Dai Sifu by the rest of the world. And this is always the thing that's difficult for some non-Chinese to understand about these terms is that they are contextual. They're based on your relationship. Someone might be your Dai Sifu or your Sifu, but they're someone else's Sihang, someone else's Sifu, someone else's todai. So what you are and who you are to different people depends on your relationship. And that's really how these family terms work. And it's much more driven in that family context rather than these things being fixed titles by which the entire world is obligated to call you. Now, given that those are the two applications or uses of the term Dai Sifu, either as an amplification by your hype man or the media, or referring to someone who might be your first teacher in a long line of teachers, that's pretty much it. And it would be super ridiculous to ask someone to call you Dai Sifu or to infer that you should be called Dai Sifu or to put Dai Sifu on your business card or on your website or at the footer of your email. Now to further explain why calling yourself Dai Sifu is totally ridiculous from a Chinese cultural perspective, let me use an example from American culture. In America, it's not uncommon to call a coach, like a basketball coach, either as coach or maybe Coach Jim or something like that. Now, of course, there are coaches that just have you call them by their name, but it's not unheard of to say, hey, coach, or hey, Coach Jim. And we can use that as some kind of equivalent to something like Sifu just for the sake of this argument. Now, imagine you meet a basketball coach and he comes up to you and he says, hi, I'm great Coach Jim, to which you answer, hi, coach. And then he goes, no, 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 no. It's great Coach Jim. It's totally arrogant and ridiculous to the ear and it reminds one of that Maestro episode from Seinfeld. Insisting that people call you Dai Sifu, literally the great Sifu, the great teacher, is just as ridiculous as asking people to call you Great Coach Jim. It maybe doesn't have the same ring because you're not a Chinese speaker. It just sounds like some variation on the Sifu title. But you have to imagine how this sounds to someone who speaks and understands Chinese. You are literally saying, I am great Sifu so-and-so. Now, someone might want to call you Great Coach Jim or Dai Sifu so-and-so. But that would be up to them to call you that because they feel they want to be very charitable in their way of addressing you, perhaps. But it's in the insistence that this is a title that you have now. I am Dai Sifu. I am Great Coach Jim on your business cards, on your website, on the footer of your email. That's the part that's kind of silly. Now, if you don't believe me and you don't have to take my word for it, I'll ask you to do a little experiment. If you are a Dai Sifu, all you need to do is take a trip to Hong Kong. 
go ahead and meet with a Chinese master. They don't even need to be a Wing Chun Sifu. They can be a, a Sifu of any style, but just make sure that they're Chinese and make sure that they speak Chinese. And I want you upon this first meeting to go up to them and introduce yourself as, hi, I am Dai Sifu, whatever your name is. You will undoubtedly be greeted by ill-concealed laughter and awkwardness if you introduce yourself this way. And then I want you to think, hmm, is it actually correct for me to insist on people calling me Dai Sifu? The great Sifu, the awesome Sifu, the big successful Sifu. Most Westerners get away with using this Dai Sifu title because they don't have to regularly say it in front of people who actually speak Chinese. And again, no one is gonna call you on your chop suey Chinese when you're living in books de Huda. In traditional Chinese martial art virtues, calling yourself or insisting that people call you Dai Sifu is probably one of the most incongruent things you can do. As a matter of fact, in Chinese culture, you usually don't even introduce yourself as Sifu so-and-so. You would normally just introduce yourself by your name or your surname or Mr. or Mrs. or Miss so-and-so. It's up to the person who you are meeting to understand, oh, this person teaches Chinese martial arts, let me address them as Sifu so-and-so. But it would be super presumptuous in Chinese to say, I am Sifu so-and-so. And it would be extremely presumptuous to say, I am Dai Sifu so-and-so. I am great Sifu so-and-so. In fact, last February, my team got an angry email from some guy who got really salty about one of my videos. He thought that the subject of my Grandmaster video was him, when in reality, it's about a bunch of people who are kind of like him. He's kind of a dime a dozen. But anyway, in this super funny email, he proclaims how humble he is, and at the footer of the email, signs off as, Dai Sifu. You can't make this stuff up. I'm so humble, call me Great Sifu. So what about people who have legitimately earned a distinction of Dai Sifu because their particular association has this? Well, I have some suggestions about how to apply it. So here is my unsolicited advice for all you legit Dai Sifus out there. If you have earned the title of Dai Sifu, be absolutely proud because it is an achievement. You most likely earned it because you have proven yourself as an instructor in some capacity. So my unsolicited advice would be to treat this Dai Sifu distinction very much like getting a mug from an employee that says, world's greatest boss. So you treat it like that. You're super happy that your employee thinks you're such a great boss that they gave you this awesome world's greatest boss mug and you're happy to have it, and you're happy that they gave it to you, but you do not go on and insist that all your employees now call you world's greatest boss. Because that's kind of what it sounds like when you force your students and other people outside your school to think of you as Dai Sifu. If you do want to insist that everyone calls you world's greatest boss, you might want to think about what that says about you. And that's all I got to say about that. After the last video, which was the interview with Lo Mong part two, people asked about that ITC event that I had a little plug for at the end of the video. And if you're a Wing Chun practitioner, particularly in the WT or Leung Cheng line, and you want full immersive Wing Chun training, you can come to the June 2020 ITC or intensive training camp with me here in New York City. It's from June 22nd to June 29th. And at the end of this video, I'll have some more information about that. Also, we have just a few copies left of the first edition of my Chum Q book. If you want the first edition, go ahead and get it quick because the second edition is coming soon. And we'll see you guys next time.